three of those squares, they do not have to use all their squares. They can cut them down to smaller sizes, but have them, if they want to cut into little rectangles, have them fold it first so that it is a nice straight line, and then have them cut on the fold so they get a nice little rectangle. We don't want any triangles, we don't want any lopsided. Now that I'm looking at some of my samples, they're a little crooked, but it's hard to get them to go straight. And believe it or not, Mondrian painted his. His were paintings, we're doing the collage because it's a lot easier, but he painted freehand those straight lines. How he did this, I have no idea. He was amazing. And so he came up with this idea because he just, well, he wanted it to be different. Now, it has inspired so many companies, buildings, um, artists. This artist made a painting, put a person in it, like a, like a little 3D thing, like he's inside of a grid. This one, wallpaper, it's called Heat on Paper. Some designer architects will build your house, like a Mondrian painting. There are stained glass windows all over the world that are inspired by him. Anytime you see him, sometimes in the movies you watch in the background, if there's a church, I know there's one in Holland or in the Netherlands that has Mondrian windows. Um, there's another one, Yves Saint Laurent in the 60s came out with dresses and purses and coats and hats that were all that. Nike has a tennis shoe that they came out with. Um, Rubik's Cube did a version of his um, thing. There's little boxes, there's all kinds of decorator things. The Mondrian Hotel in Los Angeles, <coughs> when you drive past the, the building, the tower looks like a Mondrian painting. All the lines for the windows and it's got like a little red square, yellow, blue. And balance, that is like the key word for this one. And they're gonna go balance, what are we talking about balance? Balance means the weight of the colors. You don't wanna have like, this is not balanced because everything is kind of here. There's one little yellow one up there. Most kids will agree, if you look at these, if you had to pick which one was heavier, of course color doesn't have weight, but visual weight it does. Yellow would be lighter than this. Blue would be darker, and it's like heavier. Red is kind of in the middle, so that would be kind of like, as far as weight, this would be the heaviest. Then there's this one, that would be the lightest. If they want to cut it down, they can do that too, but make sure it's only rectangles and squares. They don't have to cut it down, because if they put it on their paper, they can dissect it with a black line right through the middle. So that would be okay too, it's up to them. They have eight of these little black strips, um, and they will have three little squares of primary colors. So this is their, their thing, and they will have a big 12 by 12 white background. Before they do any gluing, just have them arrange their these on the um, to start with. Once you get these arranged how you like them, then you can glue those down. Glue your little squares down, then you can start doing your lines. And again, for those who came a little late, the colored strips are for fifth grade and up. Yeah, don't even worry um, about so those right, right now. So right now we're all going to just work on the kindergarten through fourth grade. And if we want to do the other um, one, we can stay a little afterwards and do some of those, okay? Mm -hmm. And the key for balance, Sometimes you might look at it and go, guy, is that balanced or is it not? If you can hang it upside down or sideways and it still looks good, you can hang it any which way, then you know it is balanced. If it looks like lopsided or top heavy, then you know you might want to add another stripe. Take one line away, take one square away, it's all gonna change the complete look of your picture. So just have them not glue their squares until they've got it like how they want it. So this one is like, no, that's gonna be more balanced. You can arrange them in different ways, but they can do just two. They don't have to use all their colors. In fact, if they don't want to use blue or red at all, they just want to use yellow, they can do that. They just have to make sure that they keep it heavier enough here to balance that one little section of color that's going to make weight up there in that corner. Now, don't let them, let them do like tic-tac-toe. It should be interesting to look at, but simple too. And it should be straight up and down. No diagonals, no like wobbly crooked ones. I said that this in the first grade. Not exactly correct, but that was his, so I, I always show it anyways because <laughs> it's okay. I mean, he tried. This one didn't quite touch. It is kind of difficult for the little guys to get them glued down there straight, but just have them kind of, you know, they can always move it while it's still a little bit wet. But the Q-tip idea works the best. Do not have them put glue on their paper. They need to put the glue on the little shapes and then glue that down because that's going to keep it a lot neater. And then if they want to have like a little paper towel with them, that would probably be handy too, just depending. You, know, you can do, always do it with the little ones. You can always go, go, say like dot, 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 not a lot, you know? Yep, so they exactly. just kind of do little dots as they go again, across so versus a big strip that's dripping all over the place. Yep, so you might want to cool show them that example. Yuckies. Yeah, show them a good and a bad. And then um, they don't, they're going to have eight strips. They can cut them down to size because maybe you don't want to go all the way across the page. <coughs> These are kind of broken up into little shapes. And the, this one doesn't have a line that closes it off. You don't have to. This one doesn't 
have one on that side. Um, so they're all a little bit different, and different people did these, so I'm not even sure. This one's very simple. That just has the red and the yellow. That works fine, too. Um, so whatever you want to do, it's up to you. They don't have to use all their eight. They, have, they can use half of them if they want to. And the upper grades, when you do get into the colors, if they would rather opt for the black lines, because I think it looks more striking and more really true Mondrian, they can do that too. They don't have to have the colorful strips, but if they like the strips, they could. Now, this is the one that we based the fifth grade and above on. This is supposed to be like New York with all the intersections, all the lights, all the people kind of rushing and going everywhere, which way, like a little pattern. And it's like jazz music. He was a very big fan of jazz music. He lived in the Netherlands, because that's where he was born. Then he moved to France a couple of different times. Then when the war broke out, he went to England, and he was living in England, but bombs started dropping in London. So when the bombs were dropping, he wanted to get away from it, but he could not afford to go to America, where his friends had all gone to escape World War II. And so what he did was, since he didn't care about money except for just to pay the rent, he didn't have any savings. So he was thinking, what do I do? And my bombs are dropping right next to my studio. I can't go home. I can't go anywhere because of this war. So his friends pitched in. They all bought him a ticket, and he was able to come to America. So he arrived here in 1942. He died in 1944. Sadly, he only had two years in New York. But he said that was the happiest time of his life. Everything turned no more black in his art. It became very colorful because the black was like sadness. And it just became extremely colorful, really busy. He added more colors. He added more stuff. And he said it was just really happy. Jazz music blasting everywhere. And nobody really realized that he was doing these secret little block paintings in his studio until after he was gone. And then they realized, what was he doing? Where are these things? What is all this? Because there's absolutely no subject. There's no subject matter. He called them compositions, like music, like a musical composition, which is just an arrangement of parts and into like a harmonious conglomeration. So you've got your little thing. So balance is key, that's one of the vocabulary words. Compositions, because how could you possibly name that? It'll look like things to kids because human nature tends to want to find something they recognize. They'll say, oh, bunk beds, or it looks like a bookshelf, or it looks like CDs on a rack, or they'll, you know, they come up with all the kinds of interesting things. Or it looks like a jungle gym. Sometimes the way the lines overlap will start giving you the image, like, the, like a little illusion of space, so it looks like it's a cage. And that's just depending on whether the lines go under or over another line. And the kids will usually, I'll ask them about that and they'll figure it out. Now, if they really want to get fancy, I'm just giving you some tips for the older kids. If they want to do the little stripes, like the little Lego look, look that he's got going on there, rather than glue a bunch of little teeny weeny squares, that's no way you're gonna be able to do it like that. So you'll glue a bunch of strips down on the background, then you'll cut them into little strips, and then you can put them together for like a little, border. It can go like across your page or whatever if you're doing the big kids. So that's one idea. They can do it. This is just that with the black so you can see it better. So there's all kinds of options. The upper grades um, on the instructions it calls for two red, two blue, and eight yellow. You can do more red, more blue, less yellow. It doesn't have to stick to those. So if they don't want to use all of them, they don't have to. If they want to keep it super minimalist, they can do it that way too. Once you've got your little color blocks on there, just look and see how your lines look and go and go for it. So have fun. It's kind of a fun one. And it's just, it's it's sort of calming that he wants it to be organized. But there's so many, there's even a, a closet company in Costa Mesa called Custom Closets. And they will do, and I have a picture to show the kids. I show them all the stuff that's been inspired by him. Um, it's called, they'll say, we will arrange your closet like a Mondrian painting. And it's really cute, the little ad. It was in a magazine. They've got all the little shelves. There's like a red dress. There's like a blue tennis racket or something. There's like a little pair of yellow shoes. And it looks just like a little Mondrian painting. And there's big trucks that go around that have that on the side of their truck. So anytime you do see something that looks like any of those, you know it is Mondrian. So there you have it. And this is going to be our little minimalist, very abstract grid type of a thing. And um, composition. So it's the arrangements of parts or a plan.